your decisions will you make today? Your, your new identity today. will guide you and what you decisions you get to make for the lives that you want. So here's the thing. Let's so, think about this example. You got the fitness buff, right? Let's think about how they make decisions. When it's time to eat, what type of decision is the fitness buff making? You can answer out loud if you want or just say it to yourself. When it's time, when they have a little bit of dead time, what type of decisions is that fitness buff making? When it's time to schedule out their day, what kind of decisions is that fitness buff making? When they have a dilemma and they're not sure of what to do at work, right? Nothing to do with fitness. But imagine how they feel on a daily basis if they're eating the things that they eat, they work out the way that they work out, and they challenge themselves the way they challenge themselves. How do you think they feel when they're at work, when something tough comes up? Do they feel confident, unconfident, indifferent? You fill in the blank. Now let's try that same exercise with the couch potato. When it's time to eat, what, is this, what decisions is that couch potato uh, making? When they have a few spare hours in their day, what decisions is that couch potato making? When they're planning their day, planning their, you know, their schedule for the next day, what decisions is that couch potato making? When that, when that couch potato is at work and something troubling comes up, what decisions is that couch potato making? You guys see the power of this? Those two identities are going to make two different decisions in the same exact situations. And they're not always related to the thing that you're thinking about. What type of confidence will that couch potato have? Will they believe themselves? Are they challenging themselves on a daily compared to the fitness buff? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe they challenge themselves uh, academically. I don't know. But notice there's a difference of how people with two different identities would make a decision. To help you do this, consider creating an alter ego to help guide you, right? Like I don't like I don't know how many of you guys are Christian, but I remember there's a popular saying at one point, what would Jesus do? Right? So when you had trouble figuring out, okay, how do I act in this situation? How do I respond? What do I do? You want to do the Christian thing, you you ask yourself, well, what would Jesus do in this situation? You can do the same thing with your own alter ego, superhero identity, whatever, to help you make a decision. So if you, like, we go back to our fitness buff versus couch potato. If you're in a situation where it's time to eat, you're at a family party and there's a bunch of delicious food, but you know it's not good for you. What would that alter ego fitness buff, what, what would they say? And you go with that, because that's your identity. Eventually, and it doesn't take long, you don't have to stop and think about it. You kind of, it just kind of becomes who you are. Like I stopped drinking soda like years ago, not because I disliked it. I, I love it, but I made a decision. That's not who I am. I don't drink soda. So I didn't have to argue or convince myself not to drink the soda. You see what I'm saying? So what decisions would you make? So here's some practical advice. Take your goal, whatever your goal is. Break it down to smaller and smaller manageable chunks and then figure out how will my alter ego handle this. Look to give uh, all goals um, a timeline. So no nebulous, oh, someday I'm going to do this. Someday I'm going to have that. No. Make a decision. Make a decision. If you would like, put each step on your calendar to kind of hold yourself accountable and just give yourself reminders. And each night review like, hey, did I get any closer? Did I take a tiny baby step towards my goal or did I not? Don't judge yourself no matter what, whether you did or you did it. You shouldn't be patting yourself on the back. You shouldn't be beating yourself up. Sack yourself and make the adjustment. Uh, we had a, mind if I say something real quick? <clears throat> yeah. In our previous presentation, I believe it actually might have either been with Carolyn Rowley or it might have been with Stephanie. Um, me and Shirley had um, a great back and forth about um, self-reflection um, and how self-reflection doesn't have to necessarily be an hour long to where you feel like you have you feel like you don't have enough time for it. You know, self-reflection can be anywhere between five to ten minutes. It could be just a moment of meditation or silence. 
or you give yourself a breath. Uh, but I just wanted to propose that to this discussion and understanding when you take that moment at the end of the day to do this exercise, like Vic is talking about, don't think that only being able to do it for five to 10 minutes, but that five or 10 minutes you really dive into it is not enough time um, for you to actually accomplish this mission. And don't think that you have to spend hours and hours on self-reflection to make you feel as though you don't have enough time for it. Go ahead, Go ahead, Vic. No, absolutely. That's correct. It only takes a moment. Like, hey, did I get closer? Did I do what I needed to do? Yes or no? I didn't. Well, what stopped me? Maybe it's an internal belief that is preventing me. Maybe it's something else. But we already know the things that we want to do, we're going to find out a, a way to do it. You know, we may sacrifice a little sleep. We may fact sacrifice this, you know, a little eating with something. But the stuff we want to do, we're going to do. The stuff we don't want to do, we'll figure out a way not to do it. So this is not a time to beat yourself up or to be like, oh, I'm the greatest thing ever. Just understand it to help you get closer to your goals and move on. 